So at a Prepper, Prepper Expo, it wouldn't be a complete expo without talking about solar panels. I'm with Jim here, and you're with... Energize LLC from Winnet County, Wisconsin. Now, talking about solar panels, this is becoming more and more popular based on, is it really anywhere, or is it just kind of like the rural areas, that, as maybe some people might think? Well, it's really all over the place. It's across all political spectrums. Um, we see people in rural areas, farms, businesses, residences, as well as urban areas, whether it's commercial sites or residential sites. Now, with your product, you can, as we see in here, you can customize it to whatever the customer wants. There's no standard that they have to purchase or uh, recommendations. You can do whatever they or their, their needs need. Right. We're basically focused on what the customer's needs are first. We don't go in with a Pre predefined idea of what we're trying to sell. We're trying to listen and make sure we understand what they're trying to accomplish. And based on that, we recommend the appropriate product or products and system to help them meet those needs. Now, over the last 15 years, the price of solar panels have greatly gone down. Now, and there, and we see a giant panel right here. There's some still some things that people need to know. If, like we were talking earlier, if one cell gets damaged, that whole panel has to be replaced. It, you just can't replace that one tile, I guess. Right. Um, solar cells and modules are pretty tough. They're pretty durable. They can take one inch diameter hailstones at 52 miles an hour. But on occasion in Wisconsin, we get bigger hail and that's what insurance is for. And so then your insurance company would pay to have that module replaced if that were to occur. Now, for people who are thinking about investing in solar panels, obviously it's money saving on their part. And, and based on what power company you have, you can sell some of that energy back that you don't need or, or are not using. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Each utility has its own rules, though, and a lot of those rules are changing right now, so best to get in touch and go over what those rules are. And that's what we evaluate as part of what, how we propose things to meet that customer's needs is looking at what the utility specifics are as well. So whatever we propose is going to actually be the best solution for them, accounting for what new rules there might be today or coming from the utilities. Now, for people who purchase this and maybe need to move, is this a mobile device? Or once it's installed in the house, is that pretty much the permanent location for this thing? Typically, you'd want to leave it there. It's pretty much meant to be a permanent thing. It wouldn't be too difficult to get the modules off of the roof and move somewhere else if you had, say, someone who wants to buy the home, but they absolutely don't want that on there. In most cases, it's going to add value to the home. You can show your utility bills before and after, and that should be the financial incentive enough for someone to say, yeah, that's worth uh, more money. Um, but if something happened, uh, it could be taken off. But yes, it is really intended to be more of a permanent type of an installation. And they do last very long, 30 to 50 years for the modules, which is why they're done in a more permanent type of a method. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I want solar, I want solar. What is the number one thing you tell a client before they say, I absolutely want it? What, are the, what do you tell them that they need to think about before purchasing uh, a device from you or from any other company? Well, first it starts with that definition of what the needs are because I can propose them whatever I want and I can sell something, but that doesn't mean it's going to meet those needs. So that's the number one key thing is to think about what it is they're trying to accomplish. Some people are trying to accomplish saving money on their energy bills, eliminate it completely or cut it down to size. Some people are looking for some independence from outages. Maybe they have frequent outages or they have important things to power a business, for example, in the home or medical equipment, something that they need to power that's really critical, they can't stand outages. Some people are uh, looking to be either because they have to or because they choose to, to actually be off grid. So the totally different types of uh, situations that customers have, and that's the number one thing is to define what really those needs are so that myself or anyone proposing a system to that customer can propose something that'll actually meet those needs. Now we have snow in Wisconsin, a lot of por portions of the North, north uh, United States. When it snow gets on these panels, do they still emit energy or do that, does that snow have to be removed before they can begin to create more energy from the solar? Typically in Wisconsin, yes, we do have snow and it'll sit on the modules for some period of time and Mother Nature is what dictates that duration. Um, usually it'll come off and it can come off sometimes in a day, it could be a week. Usually you just let Mother Nature do it when the sunshine comes out the next day or the next several days and take care of it that way. They do make specialized snow removal type uh, rake type devices that you can use to help that off, but most customers just let Mother Nature take its course with that. You can potentially, as a, as a uh, homeowner, damage it more with the removal process than just letting it be. Right, if you just wanted to try to use something you had at home, not a good idea because it's not worth, you're not going to save that much energy generation and you could potentially scratch it, so you'd only want to do that if you had the right tools or had somebody do it that had the right tools. And you can install anything from a barn to a church to maybe a cabin out in the woods off-grid? 
any kind of a sound structure. It needs to be a sound structure. Structurally speaking from uh, the, the major structural members need to be solid. The roof needs to be in good shape and the roof should actually be as new as possible because these systems are, like I said, very long lasting. You don't want to put them on a roof that you're going to need to replace in the next few years, five years, or even 10 years because you're paying labor that you've already paid to install and then paying to take it off and put it back on. Thank you, Jim, for the information. For people who want to have find you on the website to ask you more questions, what's the website they can reach you at? Website is www.goenergize.com. Thank you very much.